เออตลิดนะต้องเฮ้ยเพื่อนแต่ตลิดนะตลิดนะ we don't need strength เนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ย Hi everybody and welcome to Cats and Pets. So my favorite video I've made and my favorite like invention thing I've made is this hammock. My orange kitty is kind of commandeered it as hers, so the other two don't get to get in there very often. But that's just how kitties are sometimes. But just so you know, this is not the video on how to make that hammock. I've made that before. I'll link it as the top thing in the description below. So feel free to check that out. What I'm doing now is taking that hammock and making it better. So I've got my hammock here. For the most part, this thing has been awesome, but I've had some problems. I don't know about you, but my kitties love to like run and jump inside of it, and when they do that too much, things start to happen. For instance, this thing can kind of like parallelogram out, and if you do that too much, it falls apart. Which means that either me or Sarah have to come back, kind of reassemble it, and get it nice and set up. Another thing. Oh, hey, baby. Another thing. My house has all hardwood floors, and PVC and hardwood. It's almost like a hockey puck on ice. So when a cat jumps in it, it just slides. If you're on carpet, you might not have that problem, but it's still a thing. Also, in the last video, I never really talked about making this look any nicer. So I still have raw PVC with like serial numbers and barcodes and stuff. Which first time you try to make it, get it right. Second time you make it look pretty. Also, we have the hammock part itself. The best part of this thing was that it was no so. At least I thought that was the best part. But I kind of got a janky pillowcase that doesn't look very nice, and it kind of slip slides. So yeah, a few problems. But we're gonna take care of all those today. So this week we're trying to make it a little more structurally sound, a little prettier, and hopefully kind of keep it practical. By which I mean you can still break it down and also easily slide off the hammock material to wash that. I don't want to lose any of the good things from before. So let's just jump into it. So the first thing I want to do is paint this thing. Also, Luna's here to help, and you can do this with whatever color you want, or you can try to stripe it, whatever. Make it you. Make it something you like. Me, I'm keeping my frame black, like I wanted like a nice matte black. Luna only works in black, so you can go to whatever store you want to pick up some paint. The thing to keep in Mine is to make sure you buy plastic paint or maybe PVC paint. They may label it a couple different ways. I just picked up some from Walmart. You can see here that it says also bonds to plastic, so I should be good to go. Also, I tried googling pet safe paint, and there isn't really like a thing that I found. If you know of something, let me know. But this says for indoor and outdoor wood, metal, plastic, and more. So it is made for indoor furniture and stuff. The biggest time where this is like most chemically is when you're first like painting it and when it's drying. So just make sure you do that in a well ventilated area, preferably outside. I don't anticipate my cats like gnawing on the side of the hammock, so I'm really not worried about them ingesting it at all. All right, so first step, we're gonna be painting all the pieces individually. So you're gonna wanna take everything apart. So just kind of disassemble which it all should come apart pretty easy. Also at this time, if you still have any barcode like stickers on here like I do, make sure you take those off. And they're a little sticky, so you may have to goog on it or whatever thing does that. Also, I do these DIY videos in front of my living room window. So if I get darker or lighter, that just means a cloud passed over her head. But this is the best space I have. Hey honey, buggy, I can see your little ear on the video. But this is the best space I have to work in. So I'm just gonna be doing some removal. And there you go. All the pieces are magically disassembled. And I have a new kitty here. Yeah. Who's helping? Oh. Or leaving. So the next step is to actually do our painting. But we want to be able to paint all the edges and everything without having to hold on to it and making sure we can get all the sides and not have like fingerprints and stuff in it. So you have some options. You could try getting like two boards and setting them like this, like on the very edges of your PVC and then just spray painting the center. We don't have to worry about the very edges because they'll be covered up by our joints. Or I have another solution I like. So. This wouldn't be a true Cats and Pats DIY if I didn't have some random power tools. Although a hammer could also just do the trick. So let me just assemble my work area here. So we just want a nice little jig that can hold up our PVC. So I got a piece of old like scrap junk wood. I'm not really sure where it came from, but I found it in my basement. So you can just toss that down. And so you have a couple options. If you just have hammer and nail, you can use that. It really doesn't have to be in that far. You're just trying to hold up some plastic. However, I like the drill option better. You really don't need that much space between like, your nails and your screws. Just a few inches where your PVC won't hit each other. And if this isn't making sense, it will in a second, I promise. So you see, I barely put them in there. It's just enough that they'll like, you know, be secure. And I kind of put in my nail a little lopsided. But you can take your pieces of PVC, set them on there, and a nice little area where you can spray paint them. So just put on as many screws or as many nails as you need to hold all your pieces. And try to keep them straight because if they start leaning towards each other, then they start crossing and it, it's a mess. 
And these aren't any particular fancy screws, they're just what I had in my basement. These are coarse thread drywall screws, if you want to know for some reason. All right, just need a few more. So here we go, I have my nice little spray paint area and they're kind of wibbly wobbly, so that's kind of fun, I guess. You really don't care about them being steady because mainly they're just gonna hold your pipe up while the paint dries. So you might've noticed I didn't put any screws in for like the tiny connector pieces. I think those you might just be able to lay on some cardboard and like spray around and put the non-exposed face like face down. Or what I'm probably gonna do is just when I go outside, get like a stick in the ground, jam it in the dirt, and then set it on top, and it's the same sort of thing. It just doesn't need that much support because they're little. All right, let's give it a test run before we go outside. JK. But really, I'm gonna take this outside now and start painting. So catch me outside, how about that? All right, so I got my paint clothes on, and I made my way outside here. So here's my setup. So for these little joints, I just like jammed a nail on this cardboard, and I'm just setting them on top. Also, my PVC jig kind of fell over a couple of times, so I just got a 20 pound barbell and stuck it on the board to kind of keep everything upright. But I don't want to get paint all over it, so I'm just going to try to wrap it in a piece of newspaper and see how that works. Also, I just read that if you're doing PVC, you're supposed to like sandpaper it with like a fine grit sandpaper so the paint actually sticks to it, which I probably should have done before I came outside, but I kind of didn't know that. So I'm just going to do that right now really quick. Uh, you can Google it. There's lots of instructions. I think just a little sanding will do the trick. I just have some 220 grit sandpaper. They said between 200 and 300, something kind of fine. And I think the pieces that it's most important for are like the glossy pieces, which for me, those are my edge joints. So kind of trying to work them. Okay, so I got everything sanded off and wiped off. Now it's just time to paint. Also, I can't really see myself, so hopefully I'm in frame. Unfortunately, I kind of picked a windy day, but I've also kind of committed to this, so I'm just going with it. So I got some safety glasses so I don't get any paint in the old eyeballs, and when the wind dies down, I'm just gonna try to move fast. I think there's a real technique to spray painting that I'm not doing, namely standing way too close with my spray paint. But whatever, I'm just trying to make it look better, not like some work of art or something. All right, so yeah, I guess that's good enough. Um, I may try to come back and do another coat. I'll leave something here or either show it if I do. Now I gotta clean this thing out. I think I used probably way too much, but I'm not gonna spray paint anything anytime soon. All right, so it may not seem like it, but it's been about 10 minutes. And yeah, so this has been a tutorial on how not to spray paint things. So that's the thing. But I'm just gonna apply another coat. I have no use for this. I can tell I've been too close because like some spots are drippy. But uh, yeah, that's just how it's been. So maybe the next coat will do the trick. The wind has been a problem though. So I've had to get close to kind of like beat the wind, but then it's extra wet and doesn't work as well. Well. All right, I feel like that should be pretty solid. Also, I just realized you can't really see me because it's so bright and I'm so dark. So good luck. But I'm gonna wait a little while before moving into phase two, which is actually doing some gluing. But I kind of want the paint to dry before messing with any of that. Also, I got paint all over my hands and Sarah and I are supposed to go out to dinner in a few. And I just asked her if we had anything to remove it, which apparently we don't. So going to dinner like this. So I'll see you in about 10 seconds, but it might be like 10 hours of the next day for me. All right, so it's been a solid 18-ish hours since I spray painted all this. Went to dinner, saw a movie, went to sleep. Next day. So you can see everything's obviously dry now. I kind of have some drips here, but whatever. But I really like the nice matte black. So I'm just gonna take a second and reassemble everything, see how it looks together. I also dragged my cardboard over here in the shade, that way like I wasn't being all shadowed out. But the sun's kind of creeping in, so I might be moving around. And there we go, I got my black frame all put back together. I think it's looking pretty good. There are some spots that are a little bit white and exposed, but I think they'll mostly be covered up either by, you know, leg or connectors or even the hammock material. Also, if I wanted to, I could just go and respray this whole thing again assembled and like touch up any edges that I missed. All right, so next step. Remember I talked about how this thing would like parallelogram out like 
that sort of thing. Well, I wanna stop that. And to do that, I'm gonna use some PVC cement or PVC glue, whatever you wanna call it. But I don't need to glue everywhere, and I don't wanna glue everywhere. The only places I wanna glue are these top joints right here, and these other top joints right here, like these ones. So from the top down. What I'm aiming for is this edge right here, this edge right here, this edge right here, and this edge right here. And so what that will do is actually fix like four, somebody's driving off the road. And what that will do is actually fix like four of those corners and it'll no longer be able to like collapse down. But I can still do this right here where I pop off the edges. And I'll be able to break it up into four chunks. So I'll have these two long pieces, and these like two edge pieces, which is good for two reasons. One, I can make like a skinny storage box like this. It really only has to be this wide. And it also still allows me to pull off the hammock material. So if you wanna like wash it or change it out for different days or holidays or whatever, you'll still be able to easily do that. So I have to grab my glue because I wanna do that stuff outside and I might have to find another shady spot. All right, so you might just see my entire backyard today. I'm slightly further back and obviously more in the shade, but I'm still racing the sun. Okay, so before you glue, you kinda need to do the same sort of roughing up the edges thing that we did before we painted. So I'm just gonna take these connectors apart. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna grab pliers. All right, reposition, got some pliers. Tool for every job. So this is what one of our corners looks like. We have the top piece, we have the connector, and we have the opposite leg. And so, we're applying glue to the outside of this like connector piece, and to the inside here, and the inside here. Gluing, you know how it works. So just grab up some more sandpaper and just kinda work away at it. And you might be thinking, do we just paint this stuff? Which kind of, yes. The reason I took it apart to paint it is I wanna make sure you can get all the way to the edges with the paint. So I'm just gonna rough up all these pieces and all the inside pieces, but I'm gonna turn the camera off because it's really not that exciting. I will say, if you look online for like PVC cementing two pipes, there's kind of a whole art form to this, but that's for creating like watertight sealed joints. And we're just trying to hold together a hammock for cats, so really don't be too worried about it. But this PVC cement is some pretty intense stuff. So once again, make sure you're in like a well-ventilated area or outside. So just read those warnings and stuff that's on the package. I'm doing safety glasses and gloves. And I may get Sarah to hold the camera for me. Okay. So what we gonna do is, I got my pliers holding my piece, and I got my other little piece. So the box says that this stuff is like nasty stuff, so don't get it on you. There should be a brush in here. Oh, yeah. Oh. First, oof, okay, yeah, don't breathe it in, that's right. I don't know, I thought it said something about stirring. I'm gonna stir it a little bit, and then start applying. Just try not to breathe this stuff in, apparently, because it's kind of nasty. Kind of really nasty. All right, so, going to try to get this all nice and over this. Kind of painted real good. I guess on those edges there. I guess an old donkey dunk sounds good. I'm gonna get it all on this inside. I think what you don't want it to do is puddle up like mine just did. So, try not to do that, I think. I might pour that out a little bit. Maybe tap it a little bit. Nothing but professionalism here. All right, then it says, get this stuff. Get a little twirly whirl. <laughs> Apply it on the same spot. So I'm just gonna kind of go over half of that there, and kind of go over half of that here. This is kind of everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna take this guy. Let's kind of jam him in here halfway. And instead of twist it onto a quarter turn or, so or something, because that will, uh, I guess, spread it around. And it's trying to pop out. But it said something about holding it for 30 seconds, so I'm just gonna hold it for a little bit and see what happens. So what this actually is doing is apparently some sort of chemical reaction, and so it's like a, a true weld. So when this is done, it's not coming apart. So, uh, yeah, do it right. <laughs> All right, well, it's not trying to pop out anymore. So what I think I'm gonna do now is kind of keep on going with this side because it already has some cement and stuff sticking out of it. Uh, the biggest thing is after I jam this thing on there, I wanna make sure it's a nice 90 degree angle. Otherwise my hammock won't really hammock together. So uh, I'm assuming I can eyeball that. All right, so Sarah had a good idea. We're gonna take another unglued side, put it on the far end here. And so I can set this thing upright, glue this piece in here, and it should be a nice 90 degree angle, just how I want it. I guess it's kind of assuming the cardboard's flat, which it's somewhat not. This looks a little bit more flat here. So uh, I guess I'm gonna try to paint and glue and uh, see what happens. Take this guy under here to kind of hold him up some. Let's get to it. And like I said, people are doing this to make like watertight, liquid tight 
joints and pipe. We're just trying to hold up a cat hammock so it doesn't have to be that crazy. I'm gonna put him on here a little bit sideways and then kind of twist and turn it. Oh, I can only get on so far. Push it down flat. Hope that's mostly flat. On the plus side, we can always correct with the other side as we go. <laughs> All right, so this one has a little bit more space than I want to, but that's kind of what happened. I can always respray paint or you know, re-blacken that somehow. Or maybe it's cool to have a little purple stripe. I don't know. So now on to the next side. All right, so this side, I'm actually going to try to start with the, the leg piece first. So I think if I do that and like jamming that in there and kind of holding it even might be a little bit easier. If that works out, then do that way. Splash all around. Nope, don't get on that. Splish splash on the inside. That's not the side you want glue on. What? Is that right? Yeah, that's the side that's going to connect. Oh, you're right. All right. So, splish splash the... Is that right? You are right. Splish splash the other inside pretty quick. And we're just going to move fast on this side because I painted the wrong side. But this, get in here. Get it all glued up on this outside. And then... Which side am I putting on, Sarah? Top one? Yeah, the end. See? That's why it's good to have a partner in crime. They can help you out. And you are being a buffoon. All right, so somewhat mission accomplished. Uh, Sarah, can you actually wipe this thing for me? Yeah. Do this. I'm gonna set it down. Do this. Get some of this. Down the inside. Ooh. Yeah, there. So, I'll jam this one in there as far as possible. All right, that one went all the way in. So I'm not quite sure what happened before, but I think starting with the leg first, then this piece first. It's kind of the ideal way to go. And uh, if it's a little lopsided, it's really easy to shave PVC. So uh, your hammock wobbles, you can fix that. Okay, so I finished doing the other feet here. You know, show this air butt. And I somewhat reassembled my hammock together. I mean, three fourths. I'm a little skewed one way. But the nice thing about PVC is like, even if you're off a couple inches, you kind of have a lot of flexy room. So don't worry too much about that. Just Try to get it as straight as possible. So next, what I'm gonna try to do is actually, you know, paint and cement both edges and then just stick them both on at the same time, push it down, and be good to go. Um, we'll see how that goes. Do the inside really quick. Do the inside really quick. Try to do these edges and not be too generous because I don't want it to like drip everywhere. Once again, cat hammock is not gonna take too much to hold it. Finish that guy off. Right, a little bit of glue in here. And a little bit of glue in here. A little bit of glue. Whoa, way too much glue. Oh no. A little bit of glue up here. It's much spongier than I thought it was. No! Is it taking the paint off? Uh, no, it's not, but it's still kind of getting everywhere. Okay. I'll get that in a second. So I'm just gonna stick this on here, stick this on here. I'm not too worried about the quarter twist because it's not gonna take too much to hold this thing together. If I can, I'm gonna try to wipe that. Oh, wait. I might do the paint. Oh, don't do that, Jason. Dab a little bit. So a little bit of the paint, but for the most part, that worked together. Like I said, right now, I might just get the other can of spray paint. I could just, once again, make it all nice and black. All right, so I don't know if gluing first is better than painting. The only problem with gluing is you can't really get to everything. But then again, I couldn't really get to everything to begin with. And once it's glued in place and you spray paint everything, all the exposed faces should be covered. So you may want to glue first, then paint. It might be a little more awkward to paint the whole thing, I feel like, just as far as drying. You definitely have to have to do two stages and like flip it. Yeah, although you could probably set it on its feet because my feet are going to be covered up by, well, you'll see in a few minutes. Also, some of the joints where I got like a lot of spray paint on the inside, they were kind of held together pretty well with like the little tiny pieces. So if you spray it kind of intensely enough, maybe have, if you have it kind of loosely assembled and then spray it and then jam it together, that might be sticky enough to hold it together for your cat. The glue, it's definitely not going anywhere. Paint may be sticky, may give you some resistance, but I think ultimately if a cat jumps on it like three times, it'll kind of come apart. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this out here, let it vent and get rid of all these whatever chemicals and just out gas. And then we're gonna go back inside the house where I don't have to hide under various trees and stuff to be in the shade. All right, and we are back inside now. And truth in advertising or filmmaking or whatever that phrase is. It's been a couple days since the spray paint gluing adventure. Some stuff came up, but we're back at it now. So. I did do another coat of spray paint. And we have the matte black, and I'm really liking it. I think it's definitely an improvement. And the thing seems to be holding together all right, so that's good. So on to the next step. Previously, the hammock part of my hammock was this 
old pillowcase. And it did a good job, it served its purpose, but I'm looking to upgrade. So you have a couple of options. One, you can buy a new pillowcase that's like a cool pattern or design, do the same thing where you cut off the end and just slide it over. Another idea for material will be using a towel and kind of like connecting those ends, maybe sewing them together. Or you can run by Michaels or like a Walmart or someplace like that. Swing on over to the fabric section and pick yourself out some material. Now Luna's lying on this material. Or in my case, I just ran over to my mom's house who she likes to do quilting and sewing and stuff. And she had a ton of stuff just on hand. And so I found this. But I didn't find this. Honey. Honey, we need this. So I'm gonna be perfectly honest. My initial plan here was to say, find someone like your mom or a neighbor or a grandma that has a sewing machine and get them just to zip, zip up some edges. But due to some random complications this week, that wasn't able to happen. And so I had to take matters into my own hands. So breaking out the cheap sewing kit and doing this ourselves. And you might be like, you said this was no sew. Do you even know how to sew? And the truth was not really. But you know what's awesome about YouTube? With just a little determination and about an hour of time, you can learn most anything well enough. So that's what I did. So if you wanna go pro, this is how it's done. So the piece of fabric I got was actually pretty big, like probably way too big. So my initial process was to get my hammock here, toss it over Luna, and I kind of tossed it over. And basically, I just wanted to cut a rectangle that was like slightly too big. But I did try to make the length kind of add up right. So I just held up one corner, came across here, and marked it with some masking tape. And then using scissors, Cut a straight line. Something to keep in mind before cutting this way is that you need to make sure you have enough room to go like the full width plus be able to wrap around your PVC. So what I did was just kind of cut like a more than big enough square and then I'm gonna fine tune that in a second. Okay, don't eat that. Don't, hey, put that. Don't eat that, honey. Don't eat that. We don't eat strip. Okay, okay. Okay. So because I wasn't that confident in my abilities, I actually started this process. And so I present to you the first half of my hammock. You can see the length is about right, and that the width is just slightly long enough. And I've done one edge. Now this is my practice learning edge, and it turned out pretty well. I mean, well enough for me. And you can see the seam kind of going across there. This is what's called a backstitch, apparently. And I'll leave the link to the video where I learned this. It was like four minutes long, and it's a guy sewing a curtain. But it gets you what you need to know. But yeah, made it all the way across. And to figure out how much space I needed for like the hole here, I just got the hammock piece wrapped it around the edge, and just said, okay, this needs to go down like this far. Also, the nice thing about sewing the edges, if you have some not so good scissors and you kind of cut it and the edge gets all kind of ruffled up, that's not gonna matter, because we're gonna be folding this over and sewing it, and then nobody will ever see it again. So that's where we are, and my first experiment is seeing that the pipe actually fits all the way through here. So let's do it. And this is the piece of masking tape I used to kind of mark like, this is how far you need to come over. So let's just get rid of that. Take this guy apart. Alright, let's see if this fits. Let's get it started. There we go. Oh yeah! Boom! Check that out. All in there pretty snug and everything. You can really impress yourself if you just try to do something. And this isn't gonna win any awards for sewing. Once again, it's a cat hammock. So I'm just gonna stick this back on here really quick. All right, so here we go. Let's so get it full screen here. So this is my piped edge. I'm hanging well over the edge here, you can see. Hey, 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 not yet, not yet. We're not done yet. Let's see. So now all I need to do is maybe trim that a little bit and then fold it over and sew it. So I think I'm just gonna lay this upside down. This is the... Luna, honey, let's slide you in frame so everybody can see how cute you are. But we kind of need you out of the hammock for this part. You got a perfectly nice... So, here's a perfectly nice spot over here you can get in. Or not. I need it. Okay, and so how much I need. I can pull this tight across, fold it around. Now I was planning on trimming off a little bit, but there's not too, too much room to spare, and I won't have any, like, dangling over. So I'm probably gonna keep it this length. No, 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 wait, 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 hey, it's good. I'm just gonna grab some masking tape right quick. Oh, come on. So the biggest thing for this part is I wanna make sure I have it tight enough that it's not, like, gonna be so droopy that the cat is just hanging out on the floor. So this slide this lady to the side one more time. Pull this kind of tight like this. And it looks like if I can make it all the way to this black on a stripe on the pattern here, that would be kind of a good guide just like to sew by. I'm gonna hold up one finger, figure out where it is. And I just put a piece of masking tape here, that way I don't forget. 
Luna, what are you doing? That's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> Alright, we'll play with it in a little bit. We gotta get moving. So, I'll flip this. Do my little wrap around just to see. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. That'd be a nice looking hammock, I think. Alright, time to start sewing. And I'm probably only gonna show a little bit of this because it's not that exciting to watch me go whoop. But I do wanna show that it's actually me doing it. And that means you can do it if you've never sewn before. If you've sewn before, you'll destroy this. Or if you have a sewing machine, two minutes. Um, it's not done yet, Luna. So I got the pins in to kind of hold it in place, and I put it back on the hammock, and it looks pretty good, I think. I'm hoping that'll be nice and tight, that'll stay upright, and be nice and hammocky. So really, on to sewing. Also, take a second to appreciate Luna in the background, just kind of chilling in her fabric pile. Hey, honey. Nope, 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 can't get it on yet. And get a piece of thread. I have black, so I have black in my pattern, and I was kind of hoping it would blend in. But if you're a neon green person, go for it. Cut the string. I should be on Dude Perfect with these needle threading skills. Alright, so I'm just going in. And I should come out the back a little bit further up. Your hands are very warm, Sarah. <laughs> come back a little bit up. Pull all the way through. And repeat. So down, forward a little bit, through the back. And then pull through, boom, and I'm just moving right along. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is called a back stitch or something. Which I'm glad my mom mentioned uh, they can fold over and go through both sides at once. Because before I was like, I would go down one and like flip it over and come back to the other side. I was like trying to line it up and it was ridiculous. All right, so I got up to right here done. I just have a little bit more. And I have a couple of ends I need to tie off because like my knots didn't hold or something. And then I need to trim some strings from like long pieces left over, but hopefully it'll go on there and hold together, and hopefully when a cat hops on there, it doesn't all just fall apart. So, we'll see. All right, sewing, couple things. Definitely, if you can do the thing where you go through and then come back in one stitch, makes things a lot faster. Also, I found that whatever end I start on, like if I have, you know, this end flat facing up, if I poke down on that end to begin with, that's the nicer looking side. Also, Sarah's mom showed me this little thing, and it was actually in the little sewing kit thing I had, but check it out. So you can take this guy, stick it through the eye of your needle pretty easily, pretty easily, whoop. And then you have this big loop, which with this big loop, it's really easy to stick your thread through. So I just kind of go, Put some in there, and then we pull this guy back through here. Boom, there's your needle. So that's pretty convenient. All right, so anywho, this thing is all done. Now the moment of truth where I actually try to put it on and I hope it fits, which it should, I hope. Pretty sure. All right, looking good so far. Go put my other legs back on. Looking pretty snazzy. I'm actually pretty excited how this is turning out. Luna wants on it, but we got one more thing. So remember I talked about the hammock like slip sliding around? I got a solution. You can pick up little rubber feet at like most hardware stores. So I'm gonna slip these on the bottom, have nice little feet, and be good to go. Also, if I do this and slide that out of the way. Yeah, there's two cuties. All right, it's feet. And these are also nice because my feet aren't exactly perfectly level, and this kind of helps even that out. There we go, look at those little feet. All right, so moment of truth, gonna put this down and hope it doesn't break or kind of unseam or something. All right, kitties. You're gonna sit the whole time? There it is. Okay, okay. Maybe. <laughs> Very weird. You really stand out on that, honey. Oh, oh she's settled. Hey, honey. Oh, uh, you're a kid. A little angel model. I'm gonna hop out for a second and see if you can see her without my shiny white face. Oh my goodness, you're too cute. 
So there you have it, with a little bit of time and creativity, the willingness to learn a couple new things, you can turn your regular cat hammock into a fancy looking nice cat hammock. And have fun with the pattern. Get something you really like. In fact, you can get a couple things and just swap it out. Nothing's too good for your cats. If you like this DIY and you want to see more DIYs, I have a whole playlist of them and I'll link that down below. And if you're new here and you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.